Last video you guys saw, I went to the dealership and picked up this brand new Yanmar 100. Sticker says it's a 22,000 pound machine. Some folks say it weighs a little bit more. But I want to do a simple just motor movement function test of this machine. And we're going to compare it to the Yanmar 80 that they dropped off on a demo for these guys. We don't have a bunch of time, so I just want to do a nice simple how's the machine feel, how smooth and how fast is the boom function and the multi-function ability of this machine plus how easy do the tracks move. Not a full tilt test on it, just want to see how well they behave. All right, guys, we have ourselves a rare opportunity to test out two machines side by side. We got a brand new Yanmar 100, and this is the rental unit that the dealership dropped off to keep these boys entertained until the new one was able to show up. I just delivered this one for them, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the 80. They both have 48 inch bucket on it, quick coupler. I wanna fire this one up so that it's got a little bit of warmth in its veins because we're gonna turn key and let this thing eat. Wow, this one sounds significantly louder. But we'll give a little walk around on both of them. Now, this is not a Yanmar affiliated video, neither is the uh, dealership. It's just us having some fun checking out two machines. This one is way louder. You can't even hear this one over that. First foremost, standard two-way blade means up, down. Down is one, two is up. No four-way articulation, no six-way deflation. You know, some people need it, some people don't. I got a machine that's got four-way, got a shoe machine that's got a six-way, got a shoe machine that's got a two-way. Just whatever it is. Articulating boom, standard. This one's got a triple grouser with the bolt-on pads bolted onto it so it's hybrid kind of rubber track clinker nothing wrong with that a lot of people run with that system they just get chewed off you throw another set on do you open that do you open it i don't know come on now we got a Deutz in there. And more in it. Makes sense. Black. Oh, here we go. Get to your cooling pack. What I'm curious to know before we hop in the other machine and let it eat. Literally, that one is brand, brand new. Okay, steel shoes, this machine claims it weighs 18,268 pounds, steel shoes. Now, obviously, it's probably gonna be a little bit more since they bolted those things on it. This one has the same tracks, minus the bolted on option. And this one hits at 21,910. So 22K, versus 18-ish. Oh, there's another sticker right here, that's how it's set. Serial number, ah, we don't need any of that. I don't know the horsepowers of these girls. I'm gonna say they're under 75 because neither one of them have def. They both have quick coupler, hydraulic thumb. Listen to this bad boy. I don't know what year that other one is. This one's got cameras on the sides. Look at all that room up there. Is this a handle? Wow, a lot more room. How do we open this? This has got to open, doesn't it? It's bolted on, bolted on. No, this thing's bolted on. Oh, no, here it is. There we go. Oh, you can only do one at a time. Or blow at the glass. 
There we go. Oh, that's badass. Now we're talking. Vertical valve body. Like the mech. That's neat. Look at all that. Fuel filter, easy access, fuel pump. That's fuel pump, folks. That's fuel pump. That's actually pretty slick. Okay, let's go ahead and hop in the little guy and just go through the motor functions of it. And I'm just gonna get my first hand experience of running them each, just to see what they're about. Just motor functions. Everything can dig. I wanna see how fast everything flows, multifunction, stuff like that. As of right now, I'm not gonna give any exact prices, but Yanmar is the most competitive besides like a Sani. Uh, I don't even think these boys got a price on a Sani. But this is the most competitive price machine. Okay, where's the pit squeak screen button here? Oh, there it is. Now the other one's got eco mode. No, we want that off. Blade seems to be pretty fast. When you're on smooth surface, triple grousers or steel tracks like this can generally show that it's going to work pretty, pretty good because there's not much resistance. There's got to be another speed button for this. circuit on this one. Thumbs correct on this one, it's backwards on the other machine. Yeah, this one multi-functions like a Kubota backup. I side to side, yeah it speeds up. And then when I do this, it slows it way down. So fast. Nothing wrong with something that's not the fastest because when you're doing finesse work, it's really nice that you don't have to you be super finesse with this. Let's get the blade down and see if it balances this out. I think I'm going to tell those boys, we'll see how that one goes. I only ran it for unloaded it, but might need a extra counterweight. Oh wow, that the dipper stick goes past. Uh, <laughs> it freaking overextends, hyperextends. Yeah, see, look at that. Oh. Fast. This thing is way more. 
more stable. It does that hyperextend also. I see there's an extra spot on the cylinder, or an extra hole for the cylinder to go on for the dipper. See, this thumb's on the wrong stick. high flow. I've traditionally ran all my thumbs on the high flow circuit anyway. Let's see how this went. Am I wide open? I don't know if I am. Oh, dang. Nope.
definitely glad that they went with the 100. Wow, such a better experience. So now that they're all set up, they got the backup beaver turned off, and honestly, it's an excavator. There's not really too much more I can say about it. Their cab space on this is awesome. It feels about like the 080, the 290, maybe 290. Now the 290's got, it's wider. 290's got wider, but it feels pretty good. I like it. Good job, boys. This is a sick machine. I, is this a phone holder? What? Okay, she's coming around. The cup holder's in a funny spot, but still got a cup holder, so that's a win. For the price tag, can't complain about this thing one bit. I'm actually pretty fired up. Serial number, your mom. All right, now we're out of here. So, just the obvious. If you couldn't tell from the visual from the simple demonstration we did just now, the 100 is far superior. Different kind of a caliber. A lot more stable, a lot quicker. It's just, it is way quieter too. I didn't think there was a point in time where I thought that was gonna be something that, you know, swung me on a boat. But nevertheless, I'm really happy they went with the 100. And thank you guys for letting me do a little quick demo on the two of them. For buying just a simple excavator, if you're just gonna be moving dirt, rocks, trees and stuff like that here and there yeah nothing wrong with that yanmar and i never thought i'd say that because i've honestly never seen anybody run in yanmar except for what let's dig's got one that's about it so we're gonna end this one here i know it was a simple demonstration but i got stuff to do and it, it took a little bit out of my day to make that video so hopefully you guys enjoyed it i definitely enjoyed trying the two of them out seeing what they're about and we are off to the next one. Thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one later on. Let me know what you guys think and what brand preference you have. Um, I really, I got a mech like video filmed talking about the pros and cons of a mech. As far, if you're looking for one do all machine, I would choose a mech like. Uh, I know that the price tag on them is insane. Insane compared to a regular excavator, especially, I don't know how the NMAR came in with that price, but their sales might go up now after making this video. Dang. Anyway, we'll see you guys on the next one. Later. Let me know what you think. I know this video didn't have a full demonstration on lifting capacity and, you know, motor functions, digging dirt and how deep and this and that. You know, by standard weighing the machine, the... 80 is equivalent to close to the 080 that I have and then the 100 is equivalent to the 10 MCR mech like that I have on paper they all have the, about the same reach 23 to 24 feet all the way to the tip of the bucket straight out reach now what they can lift out there complete different story and the mech like for me honestly this thing checks a ton of boxes for what I do and it's not a conventional excavator, but it does the work of a conventional excavator and then does skid steer stuff. But I just wanted to show a little bit of Mechalek in action because we just we got quite a few different machines in the fleet now and all of them serve a purpose. And a regular excavator, like what the boys bought for the ranch, that thing's going to check a bunch of boxes. I did remember a couple years ago before we got the mech and before we even started thinking about getting something else, I did hear rumors that a Yanmar 100, like we demoed today, the bigger one, that that thing was a 24,000 pound machine, thereabouts. Now, that intrigued me because I was like, well, if it weighs that much, it should be able to handle more weight. So all the logs and stuff that I showed just mulching and chipping up in this video just now, I was like, man, it should be able to handle that timber no problem. But it's still only capped out at uh, what every pretty much machine across the board does, including the Mechalek as well, is they do not run any more than 75 horsepower because then they have to switch over and redo their whole machine in order to integrate DEF into it. The engine might be capable for it, um, or the machine they'll have to face you know, more engineering of getting a different engine in there. So that was a big bummer and what turned us on to a Mechalek just to swing why I keep saying Mechlek is 
it has the same reach it has the same potential if not more lifting potential i think it lifts it honestly it outlifts a 310 uh don't tell Tavid that because he probably saw this but the mech is just a champ on the way the boom is configured it is configured like a forklift it's designed to lift so it does that really well is it the best digger it does the job it's not the best digger i think i'll take a standard excavator in that place but the the height of the boom in tight areas like backyards i'm working in right now the mechalek just shines because it stick when you're in just regular boom mode driving around it is barely taller than the cab so you can work under power lines and do all that stuff uh, i know i left you guys with a little bit of you know nothing really at the end of picking up the machine video and there was a, a lot of controversy in the comments on what machine to go with and Boys, I've, I mean, I've ran a lot of machines, you know, and the ones I have are the obvious choices for the ones I choose. I do have the Mechlec 10, have the newer 080 with the NCON setup. Would I choose to, you know, have both with an NCON on it or have it set up the way it is? NCON's nice, but it doesn't need to be on the machine every day. The Roto Beck is an absolute champ for what I'm doing, and... I really hope that Yanmar treats those boys well and the dealer sport treats them well because Global's treated me very well with this Mechalek and every other item that we've got from them. So I'm going to, you know, just praise good service when it's, you know, it's shown its face. But I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. There's a little bit of rant there at the end and there's a sneak peek of a video that we uh, did later on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Later.